Hey guys, welcome to another video of GRASP, uh, Grill Rehabilitation and Sports Performance, our question and answer section. Uh, we continue to get a, a lot of great response uh, as far as questions coming in about orthopedics, sports performance, sports medicine. And so one of the ones we get a lot of times is, is regarding rotator cuff. You know, what is a rotator cuff? And what is a rotator cuff injury? You know, how do I know if I have one? And um, basically the rotator cuff is, is four muscles in each shoulder, and they go from the scapula of the shoulder blade and they connect to the humerus, so the bone that goes from the shoulder to the elbow. And the main function of the rotator cuff is to decompress the humeral head, which we'll go over that in a second, uh, assist with rotation, uh, provides additional stability uh, for the, the humeral head inside the, what's called the glenoid fossa, the depression on the scapula, and also some other things related to uh, acceleration and deceleration of movements that are associated with rotation. And so I'll kind of show you here, this is uh, the scapula, a shoulder blade, and this would be the, the humerus bone, and it fits inside the glenoid fossa of the scapula. So if I turn the scapula on its side, think about like a teacup and a saucer. So right now this would be the saucer, and the humeral head is going to be the teacup, and it sits inside that little depression, and it has to stay centered. And so what the, the rotator cuff does is as we move our arm overhead, so just for instance in forward flexion or forward elevation, as that, that bone moves up, it must stay centered inside the joint space. And so it acts, the rotator cuff complex acts as a counterbalance to the big shoulder muscle that we all say, the big deltoid muscle. And it acts as a counterbalance to keep the humeral head centered. And it's super important because if the humeral head starts to ride up, it can irritate some of the tendons that run through here, which are rotator cuff tendons, and cause them to become inflamed. And that's where you develop your tendonitis. Uh, some people um, will, will develop impingement syndrome where the bursa sac, a, a fluid-filled cushion sac in there can become inflamed and irritated. So a whole host of problems can, can result from a weak rotator cuff. And for most of us, you know, throughout our life, we don't maintain strength uh, within our rotator cuff complex. And so what starts to happen is you start to have some of this migration or movement of the humeral head up in the joint. And so that compresses or pinches some of these tendons and other structures. So just kind of looking behind me here, the red uh, large triangle uh, would be the scapula of the shoulder blade. This is looking at somebody from behind. This is the right side. And the blue represents the humerus bone. The, uh, the green represents the three muscles on the back side. So you have three on the back and the one at the top uh, on the back is also, it, it's, it, it runs just across the top of the, the shoulder here. And they all three attach on the humeral head here. So out here on the ball, either on the top or the back. And if you flip around the front side, there's one large one on the front side, the subscapularis. It's on the front side and it does the same thing. It covers the whole front side of the scapula and then it attaches over here on that ball, uh, also as a humeral head. And so they act in concert together. So the large one in the front works with the uh, other three uh, to coordinate uh, stable and nice centered movement as we move our arm in all various positions. And so a lot of times people will have shoulder pain either in the top or maybe on the outside of the back. And a lot of times, especially if they still have most of their range of motion, their movement, uh, that can just be a little tendonitis or tendinopathy if it becomes chronic uh, in that area. And so a lot of times they just need some conservative therapy, uh, maybe uh, modalities, ultrasound, lasers, e-stem, those types of things, massage, stretches, gentle range of motion, uh, and, and uh, also some, some very basic and gentle uh, rotator cuff strengthening exercises, you know, accompanied by things like uh, anti-inflammatories and ice packs and, and those types of things. And so a lot of times they do really well and don't require any surgical intervention. And you're able to resolve it uh, by correcting some of the biomechanics that, that could have gotten a little bit out of sorts. Then also you can have, it's called partial thickness rotator cuff tears. Now, a partial thickness rotator cuff tear may present, the person comes in, maybe they can move their arm through all their range of motion, but it really, really hurts. Or you palpate it, we feel it, we feel some, a lot of crepitus uh, popping and, and kind of some grinding going on and, and things just don't look uh, like they should, especially compared to the uninjured side or the unaffected side. And so with those folks, uh, we need to go through some orthopedic testing. So uh, we will go through and do uh, a, a whole battery of physical exam, uh, different uh, stresses that we're putting on the joints and the soft tissue to try to determine uh, what structure is actually involved, how severe it is, and what needs to be the next step. Of course, MRI uh, is a fantastic uh, method as far as being able to determine if the person does have tearing or something more significant going on. So that always helps to have an MRI, some type of imaging performed. Um, if the person does have a partial rotator cuff tear, do they need surgery? 
Most people over the age of 40, if you were to MRI, would have at least some history or sign of previous micro trauma or tear, two parts of the rotator cuff. Never required surgery, they just hurt their arm, you know, it, was, it bothered them for a little while, then they went on uh, about their, their day and their life and, and didn't have any more issues with it. And so most of the time with a partial thickness tear, as long as it's not very significant, uh, conservative treatment is the way to go and they don't require surgery. So they come into therapy, again, modalities, uh, ultrasound, e-stem, lasers, those types of things, massage, stretches, and exercises are performed. Uh, maybe some uh, postural correction exercises need to be performed. Uh, there's conservative things uh, that can prevent someone from in, ending up having to have surgery. And, um, and those are quite common and we deal with that all the time. Rotator cuff uh, repair is uh, the third highest um, surgical intervention from orthopedics in the country. Uh, it's somewhere around 450 to 475,000 rotator cuff repairs are, are performed each year. And that uh, number goes up by around 4% each year. And so we want to make sure and, and try to stop some of that or head some of that off in the past, so to speak, uh, with education and um, preventative uh, techniques that can be done to try to, you know, prevent someone from having a full-fledged, you know, full thickness tear. And that's the worst of, of all the rotator cuff injuries would be a full thickness tear. Those are not as common, but that's the one where the person they just, they were walking down their steps or stairs, they went to slip, reached out, grabbed the railing, felt a jolt in their shoulder, or they, you know, fell off of a, you know, maybe a, a, a chair or something like that, reached out with their arm to grab themselves, and they really, really felt something in their shoulder, usually a sharp pain, those types of things. And so that would be a full thickness tear. Full thickness tears usually do not heal on their own. And so uh, that will, will normally require surgical intervention. And then people will always ask you, okay, well, if I have to have surgery, whether it's a partial thickness or full thickness, what is my, my recovery time looking like? How long do I need to go to therapy and those types of things? And so typically a partial thickness tear being less severe uh, is, is not as long a duration of therapy uh, that someone would have to go to, but that all depends on what your lifestyle was uh, previously. If you're pretty sedentary, then obviously you don't have to, to go through the same therapy that a professional athlete would need to go through to, to make sure that everything's functioning you know, at 110% in order to be able to perform on game day. With full thickness tears, uh, and, and this also depends on how many structures were involved. Was this one tendon? Was it all four? And so there's, uh, it was the bicep involved, the bicep tendon, or the labrum. Those are some other structures that can also become damaged uh, with rotator cuff injuries. And so there's several factors that go into that. And, and with that, usually the, the therapy the afterwards, after the surgery, is pretty intense and, and pretty long term. So you're looking at anywhere from 16 weeks or greater. You know, especially with an athlete, you're looking at 26 weeks or, or even more. Uh, again, depending on that sport, what the position uh, for that athlete is on the team. And so, you know, with that, we follow protocols. Each physician has their own protocol in, in most cases, or the, the physician practice that they work for, or the hospital has their own protocol as far as therapy, as how we progress someone with range of motion, strengthening the type of exercises, when they're able to return to, to functional tasks, and also when they're able to return to sports. You know, here at Grill Rehabilitation, we have our own uh, protocols that we've developed. And we also use the protocols that were developed by uh, Dr. Mike Reinhold, Dr. Kevin Wilk, Dr. James Andrews. And um, I recently uh, completed a certification program with Dr. Mike Reinhold. He's a physical therapist, athletic trainer, and a strength coach, and has worked with hundreds of professional athletes and collegiate athletes, and uh, has been published uh, numerous times in, in journals. And uh, those three guys got together and developed a, a set of protocols. So. Uh, for therapists for various uh, injuries and rehabilitation, specific for the shoulder, elbow, you know, hip, knee, uh, and ankle. And so we use uh, Dr. Reinhold's program and uh, that I recently had gotten certified through, and I continue with an online mentorship with Dr. Mike. And so um, that's really fortunate for us to be able to have access uh, to him and, and to his staff to be able to, to bounce ideas off uh, back and forth on complicated cases. So, But essentially, um, to kind of summarize, if you have pain in your shoulder, depending on the location of pain, depending on how long it's been going on for, and depending on what your range of motion looks like, coupled with our assessment of uh, orthopedic testing that we would go through and obtaining a history and physical, and combined with any imaging that would be ordered by your referring uh, physician, we kind of put all that together and then formulate a plan. So if you're having shoulder pain, don't let it go you know, just by the wayside and think you're just gonna work it out. Because in a lot of cases, you may not notice it now, 
But on down the line, it could be something that really could turn into some, some real issues for you and could result in surgery. So if you guys have any questions uh, related to the rotator cuff or anything else, sports performance, orthopedics, uh, just uh, continue to, to message us and we'll do our best to, to get our answers back out to you guys as soon as possible. Thanks so much, guys.